Hi, this is State Representative John Lesh coming to you from my dining room in the first of what will hopefully be many more uh, vlogs, video logs, talking about events in the legislature and the uh, items or issues surrounding the upcoming election on November 2nd. Vote, by the way, you have to vote. You better vote. Be very upset if you don't. I don't care what party you are. You owe it to the strength and health of the republic to have a stake in it. If you don't, it goes away, as you've been told many times and better listen to this time. Taxes. Why are we constantly in a cycle of boom and bust? Or I guess I'm actually bust most of the time in the state of Minnesota. I had my screening with the St. Paul Pioneer Press today, and they asked, what's the major problem facing the state of Minnesota? It seems that we're in this constant crisis. Now, some people think the crisis is a great thing. Tim Pawlenty, outgoing governor, for example, he thinks the crisis is great because he thinks that you should shrink government to the size where you can drown it into the bathtub, to borrow a phrase from Grover Norquist. Some people think the government actually does a good thing, though. I mean, if grandma's in the nursing home, she's taken care of. If I want to go to a state park, go camp with my family, I can do that. Um, and those public lands are protected from being developed and bulldozed over because they're beautiful and we all get to use them. Uh, also, some people think it's actually good that we have cops in our neighborhoods and we don't have to hire personal security guards uh, to sit on our front steps or actually have gates in front of our houses like they always used to have. Regardless, taxes pay for these things. Ten years ago, we reduced income taxes, which was a huge source of revenue for the general fund of the state of Minnesota, which is how we pay for all those things. And we reduced them from, in fact, I got the rates right here, so let's have ourselves a look. Originally, prior to 99, the income tax rates were 6%, 8%, and 8.5%. Now, you only pay that 8.5% on a, the highest percentage of your income. So if you made over the bracket, um, I think it was, well, I'm not even going to say what it was because I have to go get those numbers. But not everyone pays that, just the wealthy people. To now, the taxes are 5.35, 7.05, and 7.85. What happens is we've lost about a billion dollars a year in revenue because of those changes. And what do you know? We've been creeping up towards, uh, well, six or seven billion now in as many years into the effective structure of all those. Now, we're 10 years after the changes was made, were made, but you have to wait, remember, to the next filing year for those changes to take effect for people. So why is it then that House GOP, GOP, including Tom Emmer, who I've heard say this, say that if you change those taxes, taxes back to what we were paying in the 1990s to pay for schools and to pay for health care for grandma and make sure that every kid has an opportunity um, and for police and fire, then you'll just kill jobs. We can't have that because you're just going to drive jobs out of Minnesota and no one will create jobs. Well, it, last I checked... If I create a job by having someone roof the building that I own, and let's say I made $100,000 with you, and I hire a guy for $5,000 to roof that building, that's a job that's created. I, my income, for the purposes of calculating for taxes, is $95,000. It's not $100,000 because $5,000 is deducted above the line. So how is it that Republicans can say by moving income taxes back to what they were in the 90s, our period of greatest prosperity in the last 20 years, incidentally, that we're going to create jobs? Because we were prosperous back then. We had the jobs. And now what incentive is there for anyone to, if I have the extra money, to hire a guy to roof the building that needs to be roofed? Because you can't deduct it from your taxes. You hire the guy to do it. There's an incentive. You can deduct it from your taxes as well. If someone actually knows the answer to this, you're going to have to let me know because I've asked Republicans on the floor this question many times, and they come up with some convoluted response that includes long-term amortization or deduction for the values of property and planning for things in the future, yada, 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 whatever. makes no sense. It looks like it's really strained in order to get there. And it's because I think it probably is. So if you've got an answer, let me know.